podcast. We are Mary Ellen Humphrey, Hello. Shannon Reber, and I am Susan Landrigan. We're coming to you today from the Innovation Studio at Lakeshore Center for the Arts in Westfield, New York. Today, we're going to talk about how to start a story. Hey, that's a good one to start. <laughs> uh, uh, yeah, it's, it's interesting because <laughs> I think they all have kind of their own way of getting started. They have their mm-hmm. own life. Yeah. Yeah. Does it depend on what kind of story you're writing? I think so, and I, it absolutely does. But you are the one who has started a, a one most recently. So yes. how did how did you start your book? I started um, at the end, and then going. I've heard from of the beginning. Okay, okay. That, starting over from the beginning. That's that's kind of fabulous. Yeah. Well, I have Ooh. I have different stories that have kind of different lives to them. In some cases, I'll be just sitting in a chair and I'll get this like vision of a story, and, and almost like I can see the book. Ah. You know? and, and I'm thinking, well, that's an interesting idea. But then I have to run and get a piece of paper and pencil because it's saying to me, write me down. Write me down. <laughs> and so I'll I'll fill up a, a, a sheet of two or three pages of paper with just lines of this happened and then this happened and then this happened and then this happened, which is almost like scenes. Okay. Have you ever experienced this? And then... I, I'm, I'm a pantser, so basically I the story comes to me as I write, but I will I will have the beginning and the end in my head and uh, the, the story tells itself as I go. So I'll sometimes have like something pop into my head, but it's just... I usually I usually don't even know the end. Sometimes I do, huh. but yeah. <laughs> um, well, I think that maybe my version is is almost a, a, a hybrid of a pantser, a seat of the pants writer, exactly, and exactly, a, a plotter or an outliner because I might have this list of scenes, and then of course I have to develop the characters ah, and I have okay. to figure out where it happens, <laughs> and the scene, right, and all right, that right, stuff. right. But it, it is interesting that if a story feels like it's a book, you kind of feel that in your brain. You feel this <laughs> like, okay, this is going to be a, a book, not a short story, not a, a poem. It's going to be a, a book. Uh, it's kind of weird, but that's, that's part of the way. And, and then there are other stories that are maybe if they're based on, on things that have happened. Uh-huh. So I did a novel based on actual events. That's a story that I don't that, that doesn't happen because I already know the kind of what the story is. I did that a little bit with um, my book Politics and Poltergeist. Oh, yeah. uh, I really, it's a fictional story, but I, I based it on uh, a setting that I knew and characters that I knew, mm-hmm. kind of a political world, and making fun of or poking fun of some of us <laughs> who think we're so important. And, you know, uh, That's always fun. And that was... That Note was, to self, pray she never writes a book about us. <laughs> <laughs> How do you know I have it? <laughs> You know it would have to be a murder mystery. We would have to be the the suspects or the people trying to figure out the mystery. Because well, we, yeah, we could do it. They don't know our secret life. Lives. <laughs> so Shannon, how do you start a story? Generally, the way that I start is um, a, a random idea will pop into my head, and then I start uh, choosing choosing names. Names are how I start stories. Oh, once once I find a name, it just everything starts weaving together. Uh, because I choose names by their definitions. So, like, Charlene, for your story, the name mm-hmm. Charlene, um, oh, hold on, hold on, hold on. It means something like warrior or uh, something along that line. Oh. So if Charlene was my main character, you know, there would be there would be war. And uh, he would be a hero. Oh. So there you go. Oh, okay. See? <laughs> See? But Mary, Mary means bitter. Bitter? It yeah. means bitter. Yes, it does. So. <laughs> it does. But Ellen also means light. Yeah. So uh, it you you I'm are a, little, a very I'm a, I'm a bit of every bitter light. <laughs> <laughs> a little bit my, of this and a little bit of that. They, that they song. told me when I was a kid that uh, my name meant uh, um, small and wise. Oh. Um, but I found out recently that it means old river. <laughs> so I would be nothing in my books. <laughs> Well, sometimes like the Shenandoah River. Yes, yes. Well, that's spelled different. Yeah, it is. 
So how, what would you say to someone who says, I want to write a book? And I honestly think a high percent, I'm going to say 90 or more percent of people, have at one time or another thought, I'd really like to write a book. Yeah. Right? Because there's something about it. It's mysterious. It's, it's a piece of you that lingers on when you're gone and exactly. that sort of thing. And so what would you say to someone who's never done it but says, yeah, I wish I could write a book? I, my, the first thing I would say is write. Yes. That, that's it. Just write. It, it doesn't matter if it's good or bad or something that will be scrapped later. If you start writing, the story will start working. And yep. you, you will have okay. to delete a lot of it later. Yeah. But as soon as you start writing, that's when you become a writer. And after a little while, you become an editor. And after a little while, <laughs> after after so much work and so much effort, you and become so an author. And so many bottles of and so wine. <laughs> <laughs> well, it doesn't help to have sort of what I, I call a premise. Some people might say a, a plot or seeing this, this thing that has to happen. A lot of times I have a, a, a premise, you know, ah. for example, what if, what if we lived in a world where you couldn't exchange currency? Everything had to be done electronically. So, so there's no longer any ability to be um, private. Everybody knows everything, and you know, everybody being you know, Big Brother or whoever, corporations, everybody knows about you. And you know, when I was working in uh, economic development, I learned about these companies that harvest harvest your information, mm -hmm. right, through your yeah. credit cards, through your purchases. Well, in order to do that, you can't use cash. Cash is not us, oh, right? Oh, I see. You have, yeah, to use, yeah. you have to use a credit card or some electronic means. Okay. And so but the premise is, what if you can't use cash? Oh, okay. You know, and so when you start thinking about a premise or, or something that, it, it, it can be wild. It can be like, you know, universal health care would be terrible, you know. What, why? Why would it be? And think about that, and then you can put people into a story that ex explores those possibilities. Oh. And that's one way to create a story and start a story. I, mean, I liked that story. <laughs> <laughs> that was a uh, no sin, right? Uh, that's your no last sin story? Or no sin? Oh, last Which oh. one did you like? Both of them. Yeah, yeah this two. <laughs> they, they, they were written okay. before oh, yes. all this Yes, they okay. were written in the 90s. And so you're a seer. <gasps> I am now a seer. Now that's exciting. Yeah. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah, now I can't really see beyond tomorrow. <laughs> no hoverboards it's yet. It's caught up with me. But, you know, uh, yeah, no, I was, I was, I, I like to sit and ponder. And if you sit and ponder and you begin to wonder, so ponder and wonder leads you to mm. story ideas. This is stories, mm -hmm. yes, And then in your yes, case, yes. you got the character part. Uh, exactly. Right? So I know who they are the because character. of the name. Yeah, yeah. 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 And yeah. so you kind of have to put that together. <laughs> and you want characters that 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 have character, right? You want uh, characters, precisely, right? precisely. You can't just be, you know, walking sticks on the paper. <laughs> but that's something we can talk about another time. But um, coming up with story ideas, and I always encourage people, if you feel you have a story in your in your heart and you want to write it, whether it's a true story of your family or a story that's fictional, the great American novel. Right. You know, if you, especially if you're a reader. If you're a reader, you have already in your brain some knowledge about writing, whether you know it or not, unconsciously. Exactly. You, yes. you, you, you know when you pick up a book and you read the first page whether or not you want to read that book, right? Right. Because you've got experience and you know, this writer knows what they're doing, so I'm going to keep going and read the rest of the story. And so you've got these pieces that you know. Uh, it's not as easy as it looks to sit down and, and write it, but it's not impossible. You can do it. Right. And mm -hmm. the nice thing is that if you find a nice group of, of friends who are also writers, um, once you do that, they, then you can, you can get help. help each other. You can help, yeah. Exactly. And, and mm -hmm. polish it and, and improve it and, and add or take away, whatever the case may be, mm -hmm. to uh, make it a really workable story. Exactly. Yeah. And the first thing you write down is not going to be <laughs> the way it ends, or the way it, yeah. it comes yeah. across. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. You get to do a lot of background. And I think when you first start writing, that's where you start, is the background. You know, well, I want to write a story about, and this is going to be my character, and I'm going to set it up. So if you're doing all this kind of work, and you can do it on paper, or you can mm -hmm. do it in your head, you can yeah. do it wherever you want. But once you've got your story out there, then you can work on where does it really start, and ah. what are the story arcs, and what's the tension, and what's the goal, and all these other kind of things that can make the story really work. 
see, when uh, many years ago, my husband and I were very into watching movies. Like we we watch we went to the movies probably uh, twice a week, and uh, we were we were always renting movies. This was back in the olden days when you rented <laughs> movies. Uh, when Blockbuster was still well, around. I didn't know. <laughs> Well, um, we uh, basically, I believe he is the reason that uh, my my brain works the way it does because I watch my stories like a like a movie in my head. So uh, what, once the character name comes about and the idea, then I start watching this movie in my head and I I start documenting what I'm seeing going through my head, and that it it works for me because you know. But nobody's plan is going to be the same. Right. Everyone has a different way of writing and it's what works for you Absolutely. that actually, yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. th there, there is no one way that's right. It's, <clears throat> it's whatever, whatever works for you and outlining, not outlining, uh, cast, uh, uh, list of characters, no list of characters, doesn't matter. Just write. Mm -hmm. That is, that is the best piece of advice to give. Mm -hmm. Just write. Yeah. Well, I think I mentioned before when I started, I wrote a whole bunch of words that weren't really anything and then I went back to writing short stories yeah. for a while yeah. to kind of learn the writing skills I needed. Right. But I knew I had these books I wanted to write, like No Sin and Less Right and mm -hmm. Faith and all those. And I and I I envisioned that someday I would actually write those books. Oh, uh, okay. And, and now I have some more books that I I'm trying to um, it's funny, it's hard to discipline yourself when you don't have to. <laughs> <laughs> it's true, it is. It is. I will try to play. But, um, <laughs> but it, you can also look at writing as play. Yes. Because, you know, when you're Most a child, child I, I remember as a child, make believe, right? right. Is, I'm going to be the teacher today, and here's my dolls <laughs> lined up and whatnot, and you make believe. Well, in the in the story world, you're sort of playing, and you can believe, and you get to play the role of kind of creator. You're the god. You are god, and, yes. And the author is the god. <laughs> So anyway, I'll stop. No, I think we should go on to the word of the day. I think we like should too. Yeah. No. The word of the day today is clandestine. Ooh. Something done secretly or in a private place or way. So that's, that's a good one. That's a very good one. <laughs> I think we should. I think it would make a great title for a book. And I think the character could be, you know, Clandy or something. <laughs> Some secret Claudine. thing. Claudine. Claudine. Yeah. yeah. <clears throat> I don't know the name of that one, so I, I don't know the, the definition of that name, so I'm going to have to look that up as soon as I get back. I suspect it's an <laughs> important ingredient in certain books. Mm -hmm. you know, Clan clandestinosity? There has to be yeah. something secret. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Well, for a mystery, yes. Mm. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Maybe even in uh, memoirs. <laughs> oh! Well, that might not be so good. Oh, well, yeah. <laughs> Reveal your secrets in your memoirs? <laughs> yeah, clandestine. Why did I write this book? Well, that is something to, to think about, because writing a book doesn't have to be a novel. It can be a memoir. It mm -hmm. can be a nonfiction. It can be a collection of essays. It can be, it can be something observations all right, or right, historical exactly. yeah. or a family. Did I say family history? Family. I think you did, yeah. Yeah, families. <laughs> Those are really popular right now, too. And you can oh, okay. go to your, your aging, like me, <laughs> aging grandmas and aunts and uncles, whatever, and ask them to tell you the story of their life. You know what? Say, you know, what? Did, what's the most important thing, or what was the most fun thing, or what was, you know, what was something you did when you were young that we wouldn't understand today? Right. You learn about, you know, people cranking in Model A or something. You know, things that we, <laughs> we're like. It, I think about the telephone. I mean, today's kids have no idea that we had to actually <laughs> dial. dial. And then we had there was this a cord. Long cord. <laughs> The longer the cord, the more freedom we have. The more freedom, yes. Yeah. We could go in the other room and get a cup of coffee or something. <laughs> well, thank you for spending time with us today. We value your feedback, and we'll see you next week. Happy week.